Hello and welcome back to Insemination. I have another traumatic episode for you. I am so excited to introduce you to our next guest, Kat Palmer, who is a Barwin baby. For anybody whose stomach just curled right at that sound, you have absolutely the right instincts. Dr. Barwin of Canada is another doctor who committed fertility fraud and switched out the chosen donor DNA for his own. So don't worry, this is not just a United States problem, this is a global epidemic. Before we start this episode, please subscribe, leave a review, that stuff really helps out. And don't forget, if you would rather watch instead of just listen to the podcast, we have the full thing available for you on YouTube. Also, just in case you don't know, I'm actually a full-time stand-up comic, and if you want to see me do stand-up comedy, my entire show schedule is available on my website, www.laurahighfive.com. And coming up July 23rd, I will be co-producing with the fabulous drag queen Gina Tonic in New York, Stand Up for Drag. It will be a stand-up comedy and drag artistry event where we will be raising money for both the Transformation Project and Drag Story Hour. We hope to see you there, and now let's get to the episode. And welcome to Insemination, Kat Palmer! Hey! <laughs> All the way... Me. Well, thank you for being here. I think you actually, when I started doing my little TikTok stories, you were one of my very first people that like I connected with, I talked to, I interviewed. So I would say you were my first layer of trauma. Thank you. You're very welcome. (laughs) Thank you for creating content. (laughs) Because it's pretty sad. There's very little out there in the world. (laughs) I I think um and and I was so grateful because like I think you you instantly were like by the way I I have a very dark sense of humor about it because like that's just how I deal with it and I'm like oh, me too we're gonna get along great this is fabulous perfect <laughs> it's perfect but you are a donor conceived person from Canada which is great you are my first Canada guest on here so hello Canada what is up um I for anybody uh, if anybody is interested um you know. I'm obsessed with maple syrup. Maple syrup is absolutely one of my favorite flavors. So if anybody ever wants to send me anything maple syrup wise, I am that like maple candy is my crack. (laughs) Cadbury eggs and maple candy. Those are my two things I can never say no to. So I I love my I love my Canada. Um, (laughs) But you are you you are a donor conceived person. Uh, and more, I would say, I don't know if the right word is colloquial. You are a Barwin baby, <laughs> which is... That is what we've been deemed by the media. They're, oh, thanks, their media. Original, their original um, title that they had for one of our, like, CTV, basically our Canadian, like, 50-50, is that what you have? Uh, Dateline, whatever. Yeah, um, our Dateline, yeah. Yeah, Exactly. The original title of the episode was Dr. Daddy. So I will take Barwin Baby oh. any day. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's better. Now, for anybody who's just like, oh, shit, what's this episode about? In the United States, we have Dr. Klein. In Canada, they have Dr. Barwin. Because, okay. hey, because <laughs> fertility fraud is not just a United States thing. It's a global problem. So we're not alone, United States. I don't know if you've heard, but we have now found 70 doctors who have committed fertility fraud within the United States. Uh, Do you know how many doctors have committed fertility fraud in Canada? So, so far, Dr. Barwin is the only known case. Okay. However, you get to meet the community, and I suspect you might be learning about a few more cases in the future from you guys um, will just catch up to us it's okay (laughs) you'll catch we'll we'll have a great time we're like don't just don't tell anyone don't tell anyone don't tell tell anybody about sexual assault it's fine um how is how how are your fertility fraud laws now because i mean for us we have at the moment 11 states have made fertility fraud illegal we're actively working on uh, making fertility fraud uh legislation federally um putting that in the books how are you guys in canada now since the dr barwin case so nothing has changed since when i was conceived i love it 
story came uh, out. <laughs> uh, I love status quo. Currently in Canada, it is completely and totally legal for a doctor to use their own sperm or that of an unknown donor or so, patient in a another patient. Uh, in the laws haven't treatment. changed at all? Mm-mm, without their knowledge or consent, completely legal. Oh my and God. And there's nothing to protect your own genetic materials once they leave your body. Oh my God. Even after the Barwin story. Okay, well, we got to get into the Barwin story. Be- <laughs> oh, oh. Huh. Okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, I think this is a record. This isn't, we're not even 10 minutes in the episode at this point, and I'm already vomiting. This is fabulous. Okay. So, Dr. Barwin, let's get into this delightful, delightful fellow. Let's start at the beginning. Who is Dr. Barwin? What makes him tick? You know, we can go back to the actor studio and be like, what's his favorite (laughs) sound? What sound turns him on? (laughs) Um, so yeah, please, please tell me about, uh, about, uh, Dr. Daddy. There it is. There it is. There it is. Dr. Daddy. Oh, we, I, I know a lot of our fertility fraud products in the States have nicknamed their, their, their donor dad is Dr. Daddy as well, because it's like, uh, yo, you did it. We're going to call you it. So, you know, I can't, um, <laughs> I, Norm. this is the problem is that I grew up knowing this gentleman um, because he's very, he's, not only is he a very prominent uh, fertility specialist in Ottawa, who my parents were very thankful to and made sure that I went up and said hi many times throughout my life. Uh, he also is very well known within the Jewish community of Ottawa and the arts community. Both are communities that I was heavily involved with. Um, but uh, he started out not such a bad guy, or so we thought. Uh, he was a very respected renowned fertility specialist he was this is to- always what they say about them all of them were like renowned members of their community yes. they were they were they were staples they were uh religious figures i, I mean it, it, this is like th- this is such a copycat like yeah it, it, copy paste so it's such Canada, a copy paste like called the baby god uh, ew. because he was really the doctor of last chance if he couldn't get you pregnant then you know, you should maybe look at some other options, adopting or what have Ew, you. Baby um, God. Oh, that mm-hmm. is so gross. And that is. He won the Order of Canada, um, which is a very respected prize by the Canadian government here. <laughs> but his nickname was Baby God. The Baby God. The baby god. I mean, I feel like, I, I mean, obviously, I, I have no idea what kind of diet, if he has any kind of diagnosis or anything like that, or, you know, but that to me is like, that that is narcissist catnip right there. Yes, I am the baby god. Like, yep. <laughs> bull. Okay, well, let's proceed forward with the baby messiah. All right. Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so all right so prominent member and you grew up so you knew him like you you like had met him face to face yeah many many times um so he went to the same his family went to the same synagogue as my family did um oh. and then when i was growing up i went to a little school called the honor school of speech and drama and uh, he and his wife were very heavily involved in that school sponsored a lot of events um and we're very look much- how supportive your biological father was. <laughs> yeah. He was there for Great. you. Oh, God. <laughs> everything sucks. Everything's awful. Throw it in rice. Okay. All right. So respected member. All right. Now, what was? May I ask? Like, can we actually go back a little bit to like his? Um, so he was an. So I assume he was an OBGYN. <laughs> I don't like that pause. Well, so <laughs> he, Dr. Barwin initially got his medical license in Ireland. That's where he went to medical school. And when okay. he immigrated to Ottawa, Canada, uh, I believe he worked at, you, you have to do some fact checking on this, but he worked at the Ottawa General Hospital under the assumption that he would do the proper certification to be recognized as a full medical specialist here in Canada and my understanding is that while he had the uh, legal ability to practice as a general practitioner he didn't 
pass the certification or, or at least take the test in Canada to get the official recognition um, <laughs> to practice fertility <laughs> with a full license here. Okay. I need to understand how he didn't have the right cert. How he went from not having the right credentials to baby God. How did to that jump happen? A specialty clinic. Yeah, I, <laughs> this is where what? it's a little fuzzy for me too. So I know he was working at the Ottawa Hospital. Um, he didn't get that proper certification, but I guess there's rules around being a, a private specialist versus. I, I don't I, again I don't know Laura <laughs> but he is not properly certified although he did have a, his own fertility clinic okay you so can, you can do some googling <laughs> Cut that. okay so everybody we, so we, we have to double check this one okay that's fine that that's more than okay but he did go to med school he, he did and he did graduate he did graduate he is a okay he, he is a real doctor he is okay. We think. That is, we think. <laughs> we think he is. I don't know. Maybe he inseminated into a fucking diploma. I don't know. Okay. So he graduated med he graduated medical school from Ireland, came over here, but him getting the proper certification to be a fertility doctor, that was never that there is a bit of a a question mark there. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. I wish that so then, the case. he has a medical license, but he does He never passed. He never jumped through all the hoops to get the proper certification for his specialty. And what specialty? And which was fertility? Okay. So then, how did he not get the the special certificate? And then, how did that to own <laughs> his own clinic? No, I don't know. All right. My general feeling is that the reason he opened his own practice was because um, th when that certification didn't come, when he didn't get, <laughs> pass all the tests he said he was going to, I think there was some quiet firing <laughs> from the Ottawa General Hospital. And he then went and opened his own practice because he was no longer w as welcome as the um the okay the like high-risk pregnancy unit at the hospital <sighs> but this was okay, like so, late 70s early 80s so it's so a question under <laughs> so for people who are listening just please understand there are some gaps in this that we're, we're trying to figure <laughs> out but just know that like there there are some gaps so please take that little piece with a grain of salt okay Correct. so then so this is all within ottawa now yes oh, okay and so now he has his own fertility clinic. He opens it up. Mm -hmm. And what happens? And he's unbelievably successful. <laughs> how many and how long does he have his own clinic for? Uh, it was still operating until 2014. What year did it open? Uh, he 1984. He left the Oh, 1984. Hospital. Okay. Yeah. Delightful. <laughs> There you go. So, there we go. All right. So then he's having this incredibly successful practice. He's nicknamed the baby god. He is a prominent member. And then and and then tell me what this is a fairy tale. Everything is so happy. It's la di da. What 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 could possibly happen <laughs> that that might put this incredibly prestigious man into into such a into such a questionable place? Uh, well, <laughs> A couple of patients throughout the years had gone public when they suspected that there was a mix-up in the sperm uh, for their donor-conceived offspring. Ah, what kind of mix-up? Like, did they not get the right donor? Did they, um, was the donor different than what they thought? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So they had picked a specific donor and then they went online on the donor sibling registry, met up with other children conceived with that same donor, took a DNA test, discovered that their kid didn't match the DNA of other children of that donor and that something had gone horribly awry. <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right. Ooh. That's okay. So then, our, okay, so 
Okay, so they they, they took the donor number. So that's how they were they were finding their so-called sibling pod. They were taking their donor number. They were and then they took the DNA test and the donor number and the DNA test were not were not working, which is a why. Unfortunately, you know, with donor conceived people, I know you have your donor number and that's great and that's awesome. But it is a big reason why I turn. Please go take a fucking DNA test. And I know that there are so many donor conceived people who are like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have some private company own my DNA. Here's the bad news, pumpkin. They already do. You're a donor conceived person. A private company already owns your DNA and can do whatever the hell that they want with it. Get the DNA test and get the information that you need. This is message is coming from Laura High and Laura High only. I have never worked for a commercial DNA test. I've never worked for the government. Never once, at, except jury duty. I don't know if that counts for working for the government, but that's as much government work of, as I've ever done. I don't think in any way, shape, or form the government wants me to fucking work for them. <laughs> but does that? That's that's my my PSA. Okay. So then it wasn't working out. So these siblings were then like, shit, what's happening? Why isn't it working out? And then um, so then families what happened? went public. Uh, OK. And then uh, that inev- uh, inevitably led to a small hearing with the Ontario College of Surgeons and Physicians. So they're a pre- uh, provincial legislative group for okay. medicine in Canada, kind of like if your state has a a medical board I guess medical governance Mm -hmm. um statewide they had a hearing um they really just gave him like a slap on the wrist um he had to pay I think it was like small couple thousand dollars and uh I think he got a two-month suspension uh but that was it and this was not for finding out that he was switching it out for his own Right. At this point, it was just other donors. They didn't other know this yet. samples being swapped. Okay. He, he was also at that point right on the verge of retiring. Um, and so he kind of used that as the opportunity to wrap up his clinic and retire. Okay. And so this was only I, a, a couple of families who went public. Yeah. Yeah. It was... Um, there had been... I believe one or two cases in the 90s, but it was very quiet. It was settled with a, some sort of NDA because there's very limited records available. Of course. Um, but those two, two of the mothers in two of the mix-ups did go public. And uh, okay. yeah, it was very small. So it was just, you know, a little accident. It doesn't seem that bad. All right. So then he's 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 tying it up in a little bow. He's going like, we can just we can just call it. Thank you so much. Here's your couple thousand dollars. Blah dee da. Moving on. And but I I I know the story doesn't end there. I'm aware <laughs> no. that there's more. That there's a yeah. that there's a second chapter. Yeah, part two. Uh, yeah, what what was part two? Well, so on my birthday. Uh, Ew, actually, I hate that already. <laughs> uh-huh. In 2013 is when that hearing happened with the Ontario College of Surgeons and Physicians. So I'm an adult. I'm living out in BC. I'm scrolling through Twitter the morning of my birthday in 2013. And I come across an article from the Ottawa Citizen titled Renowned Ottawa Fertility Specialist Dr. Barwin uh, Involved in mix- Firm Mix-Ups Court Hearing. Uh, and I recognized that name. And at this point, I knew I was donor conceived. And so I clicked into the article and thought, you know, it might be time that I look into this a little bit further. Oh, um, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, cat. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so <laughs> I uh, called the clinic because it was still operating in 2013. And just yeah. asked to see if they had any records on file. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you know how this one goes. Oh, what uh, was it? Did it? Did they say it went up in a fire or, or went in or flood. in a flood? It was a flood. 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 Oh, yeah. nice flood. Cla- okay, uh-huh. great. Yeah. Um, in Canada, you're required <laughs> oh, to keep yes. medical records. I know. Oh. I know. Fires and floods. That's it. <laughs> um. 
in Canada. Mine was a fire. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, I was told by my my parents and fertility doctor my papers went up in a fire. Oh my god! But you got a flood. Nice. Oh, flood. it was great. Yeah. Um, Ottawa is nowhere near the ocean. Just, just so clear. I was about to say the fuck <laughs> was that city. flood. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I uh, get so uh, fu- fun little trivia fact. When Katrina happened, yes. Katrina apparently took out all the the infertility clinics. Like they, that one was like I think all the infertility doctors were like yes, and that they used <laughs> Katrina for like a ton, a ton of like missing papers. Uh... They used the Katrina, which I was just like, you fucking, you're using like a literal national Human. disaster. Tragedy. People are dying, yeah. and you literally are using this as like, well, we're gonna use this to like, but fucking dicks, dicks on a stick, y'all are. Uh yeah, no, Katrina was a uh, is a big one that that the clinics love to use. Yep. Uh but I yep. I was the classic fire. But yeah, oh but I was about, but Katrina, Why? I'm like all of them though. It's so bad. It's li- literally I, everybody go ask a donor conceived person that you know <laughs> and <laughs> ask them right, yeah. what happened to their papers. I guarantee you, five out of ten will say my doctor said it got destroyed in a fire or a flood. I promise you, five out of ten. It's like fifty percent. They I know. swear to fucking they God. They know they've just been doing this the whole time. Yeah, they've been doing this the entire time. Okay, so, but I still so, can't so, get over that they said a flood to you. Like, yes. fire would have been and, better because it's landlocked. <laughs> like, that's just a dumbass lie. In, in, uh, in Canada, <laughs> um, we were required to keep medical records for 10 years. Um, and my mom had never stopped being a patient at his clinic because he was operating as... <laughs> Wait, can, can we just take a second to say that qualified. that's really, really... St- the 10 year gap and like say how problem so right. they have to keep it for 10 years so you so they keep it from what the time you're inseminated for 10 years I'm assuming yeah from when so, that woman is a patient so how many donor conceived people don't know their donor I'm, conceived yeah and, or a 10 or like hey mommy <laughs> hey mommy can i have my donor number like that's 10 years uh, we have a, a similar thing as well in the united states that i know that uh trying to fix as well um to keep to keep the papers for longer yeah. as well but like that's insane like 10 years is just so useless right okay but because because my mom had never stopped being a patient she had continued to go to see him um multiple times in that 10 years she'd never well over really over 20 years at this point her do you have more never... siblings pardon me do you have more siblings no i was <laughs> i was raised as an only child um but she continued to see him as an OBGYN. Um, oh so got it all right it. yeah um so she was going pretty regular like once a year sort of thing to him and so her file she never stopped being a patient her file never should have been destroyed or mm. That was tricky floods mm-hmm. in those landlocked mm-hmm. cities. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Ottawa <laughs> Canal might have uh... <laughs> really overreached there. It was a strong, yeah. strong, yeah, <laughs> strong canal. <laughs> Sorry. That's going to keep there me you laughing go. all night. There you um, go. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, uh, okay. So you, you call... Your papers are on with a flood. Um, do you then, do you do the DNA test? <laughs> so eventually that's what I ended up doing. I, I had asked my, my dad and I had had a conversation about it right before okay. I left for college. I really wanted his blessing before I did that. And luckily I get dad that is like the most supportive person in the world. I'm like, yeah, you should totally do it. I've had you I... in all the databases for years you need to figure this out what if you have siblings i love when the non-biological parent is supportive and understanding and empathetic like that's just like one to me that shows how secure of a parent you are how like you like that to me says like you you know you did a good job like, yeah. you know, you stand by your parenting, you know, you were there, you know, you love your child and you are secure in that relationship. Like I, that exactly. to me says so much. Um, I fucking love that energy. So yes, yeah. yes. 
Cat's dad, if you're hearing this, you, you're a winner in my book. I love it. Hell yeah. Yeah, his name is Lion. Lion? L-Y-O-N, yeah. <laughs> That's a cool name. All right, Lion. I know. I know. He's, he's, he's pretty great. Um, but uh, no, so I finally took a DNA test. And everything okay. I had been told up until that point about my donor was that they were German and Irish. Uh, they played the cello. That was very important to me because I was very musical. Um, and that's how it was explained. And uh, they were in med school. That's all I knew, which is why I was good at biology as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know if you can tell this from my face, but I'm not German and Irish. I am very Ashkenazi Jewish. Uh, yeah. My mm -hmm. uh, DNA results came back. And uh, ditto, girl. <laughs> Mazel to us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, conveniently, Dr. Barwin is also Ashkenazi Jewish. Weird how that works out. Strange. It's very strange. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that one. Jerry's still out, but. Yeah, they told my, my parents I was, uh, my donor was going to be Irish and Scottish. <laughs> and like, my mom does not have a lick of Ashkenazi in her. Oh, really? So, not, no, oh. not even a little bit. So, like, I stood, I stand out in my family a bit. Like, everyone's like, <laughs> Shalom. <laughs> like, Shalom. Like, what's up, kid? What are you, like, I, I always tell me, like, um, like, before I knew I was half Ashkenazi Jewish, I worked at the Toys R Us in Times Square, and I would have people from, like, the Hasidic Jewish community come I'm up and Jewish. speak. <laughs> and they literally speak Yiddish to me, assuming, and I'd be like, I'm so sorry, I'm not Jewish, I don't speak Yiddish, and they'd be like, what? The, the, and they just looked at me like, are you okay? I had a similar thing. I had a teacher who taught dialects. Um, yeah. She's quite renowned, but she was a little kooky. And she taught dialects for the first dialect you did with her. She was very into blood dialects. And this mm -hmm. idea that it would come naturally to you if it was in your DNA. And, and I remember crying in her class being like, Dr. Iris, I just, I just can't, I can't do an Irish accent. And um and maybe I was just terrible at accents and that's the middle of the story. Maybe but that, yeah. I remember her saying, like, you know, I've had this before and sometimes my students discover they're adopted or... <laughs> oh, my God! That's a way to drop something on a kid. Be like, hey, yeah. maybe this is why you suck. You might be, like, a like that's there something to something fucking drop out of nowhere. No, I know. She was kooky, but, you know... Like, Wait, she was oh, my like, God. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right. A similar thing of like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I yeah. This. <laughs> yeah, I forget. Like, uh, I had my 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 best friend growing up. Her sister called called it when I was thirteen years old. She was like, "So your Jewish friend?" And my friend was like, "What are you, what are you talking about? My my Jewish friend? I don't have a w w which Jewish friend." She's like, "A Jewish friend who's he literally here every single weekend." And she's like, "Who the?" are you talking about your jewish friend that you watch buffy the vampire slayer with and she's yeah. like laura laura who's in catholic school what laura yeah. who was an altar server what do you mean jewish and her sister was like she's fucking jewish like you know that right and she's like no and i was like I all right so many girls whose names are like Hila and <laughs> shoshana amalia who look exactly like you oh yeah, I mean, this is not not a joke in the least bit. Uh, I'm I am and I do acting as well. And I and I'm like the thing that I have been called in, like because you you get called in for like very specific types. Pick and up, yeah. the thing that I have been called in the most for Shana before Goldfarb. before <laughs> any other type. And I'm, this is not an exaggeration. I, the most I've been called in for is Holocaust survivor. Hands yeah. down the most is a holocaust survivor <laughs> and i and and that was before i fucking knew and i'm just like we love that everyone else fucking knew this about me before i did jesus Aww. yeah <laughs> but no I'm i always sorry, loved it when friend. oh no honestly i'm so I, I i always tell people 
I love that I'm part of this community. I love it. It's amazing. I wish I just knew well, you're sooner. You're in New York, so that's yeah, fun. I, I, I'm in New York, so in Vancouver is this big. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, like I grew up. I went to more bar and bar mitzvahs growing up than I did Sweet Sixteens. Amazing. I've probably Amazing. been to more Jewish weddings than I've been to any other kind of wedding. So for me, like oh, that that amazing. culture, it was always very intertwined in my life. Yeah. Um, mo- half of my um my my classmates in school always because I, I went to catholic school for a little bit and then i switched over to another school half of my my fellow students were jewish so it was always yeah oh that's so funny see yeah. i was token for so much of my really my call yeah arts college <laughs> not to be stereotypical but it was strange um and then my elementary school as well because i was living in a french part of ottawa um yeah and uh yeah it was very similar I was like always the kid at uh the Christmas concert who was like Hanukkah is the festival of like every <laughs> every year without fail uh, oh I know New York. Oh, I, would, I would die I wish I wish I okay wish. well the next time you come to New York we'll, we'll go we'll go hit some Jewish delis together yeah but uh okay but anyway sidetrack anyways <laughs> dr daddy dr daddy okay so you your dad lion who i love Rrr, lion Lyon is palmer. what a great guy lion palmer <laughs> we love you we're number one fans you're awesome he's supportive and he's going like yes girl go take that dna test and yeah. so you get ancestry or 23 and me which one uh so i did uh, family tree DNA. Oh, of, I just did that one. Because everyone in the donor conceived community at that time that I was connecting with online said, you know, 23andMe people are just doing for medical right now. Um, Ancestry was not the biggest database at the time. And they said, you know, you're more likely everyone on family tree DNA is going to respond. Interesting. So, okay. I had tested there and they were Oh, I'm really so excited big. now to get my results back. Yeah. Oh, yay. We're okay. We probably are. You're Jewish. So. We, we, I, we're, 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 we're cousins at least, yes. you know, of some degree. <laughs> but, uh, no, oh my God. What if you know my donor? Oh, that would be fun. They're from mm. Ottawa. <laughs> okay. So you do family tree and yes. you wait, you, you spit in your little tube. But you do you do the swabby. Yes, it's the swab. Yeah. So you do the yeah. swab, you send in your spit, um, your saliva, it's all good. It comes back. Dun to da dun. And what do you find out? Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi. Now are seven you seven million cousins? All seven the cousins. I love it. Okay. So we're not Irish and German. Nope. And and what do you do with this <laughs> this newfound um mazel information? <laughs> So I called Dr. Barwin's clinic mm-hmm. um, and actually I was planning to uh, visit Ottawa just to go visit my family. And so I booked an in-person appointment with Dr. Oh! Barwin. At- oh, 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 <laughs> oh, <laughs> you did what? Oh my God. At the yes, you did. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so my dad drove me to the clinic because it was in the same location that it was in the spring of 1990, which is when my parents were were going as patients and trying to conceive. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I actually had tried to record that conversation, but my phone didn't work, which is unfortunate. But I had a face to face meeting with him where uh, I kind of laid out the facts that I had at the time of, you know, there are these other cases, you've mixed up samples before. I know that happened to me because I believe my parents when they told me after hours and hours and hours of picking the perfect person that my donor was German and Irish and my DNA showed that I'm Ashkenazi Jewish. And he just kind of, blamed it on the lab he had at the time and there must have been a mix-up he's very very sorry um and my favorite part of that conversation is he tried to uh blame my obsession on needing to know who the donor was on my own mental health and so he 
<laughs> he, you know, he said, well, you know, you're young, you're, you're in a healthy relationship. You're very, you're doing very well for yourself. Shouldn't that be enough for you? I'm really Ew. worried that you're so oh, focused the on gaslighting. Who this donor is. Mm -hmm. oh. um, meanwhile, he's having this conversation in an office with a collage of baby photos behind him, of which my photo is on there. <laughs> um, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. And to add I need a shower. To I need a shower. Oh my God. To add insult oh. to injury, because I had done every, I jumped through every hoop he wanted because he couldn't find the, the medical records. He pulled out a file that had my mom's name on it with nothing in it except like a donor list, like a partial donor list with because <laughs> he'd asked me for my blood type and so I told him and he gave me this list with donors who corresponded and it was all like Irish Catholic Irish Catholic Irish Catholic and couldn't have been any of these individuals but miraculously he had found this this one page um so I just kept saying you know if I was a woman in the spring of 1990 what clinics where would you have gotten your samples from um and he gave me uh, three <laughs> clinics. Two of them opened in the early 2000s. So they were vetoed right away. One of them was ReproMed. Uh, so I called ReproMed and miraculously, whoever it was I talked with actually went and pulled the records and they did not send a single specimen to Dr. Barwin's clinic until the summer of 1990. So that didn't work out. Um, unless I was the fattest preemie ever. Um, and at this point, I had been in contact with quite a few donors just on the donor sibling registry with the information I had about myself that I was Jewish. And that was kind of it. I have brown hair and brown eyes. And uh, one donor um, that I talked to initially had contacted me. He said, I couldn't figure out why the name Barwin sounded familiar because he was a Jewish donor in New York um, and we had already compared DNA and it wasn't him, but he sent me an article from the Ottawa Citizen, our newspaper in Ottawa in 1988 um, with, do you have, do you know Ident from me? Mm -mm. It was a big clinic out of, based out of New York. And there was an article from Dr. Barwin saying, you know, sometimes it's so difficult to find donors and, and all the hoops and paperwork you need to jump through in Canada to get local donors that I just import from American sperm banks. Um, and uh, and one we, of the we are listed, in, in case anyone didn't know, uh, the United States is the number one exporter in sperm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Correct. USA. Yeah. America. Yeah, yeah. Num number um, one. Number yeah. one expert. Yeah. He it's... actively denied and tried to say that the Ottawa citizen had misquoted him that he never used that sperm bank in New York. Um and you know, while it must have been some local local donor. Um <laughs> it I mean it was a local donor. It was a little bit more local than we thought. It was a very <laughs> local donor. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> oh, there. Mm -hmm. I didn't well, have I. I didn't have the chutzpah to ask him. Did you ever use your own sample? Because I knew that that was really common in the donor conceived world. Just the reality yeah. of needing a live sample. Um, I didn't have the the courage to ask him. Was that in your mind, or were you like, my aunt had also suggested that to me right before I yeah. had gone into this meeting with him and I remember because I knew him like this is the thing is that this is not some stranger this is not some evil scientist this is norm <laughs> the it's norm kind of thing off key norm yeah this is um, evil it's bad norm it's it's evil norm yeah yeah and I Ugh. googled his photo <laughs> and okay I, I knew, like, I just, I didn't know. I couldn't prove it at that point. But the but genetic like, mirroring was, like, kind of going, like, oh, fuck. Well, 
<laughs> my entire life, I've been told that my smile is very infectious. Um, and <laughs> it, it is. It just, yeah. Yeah. It is. And, and there's just something like if you look up, if you Google him for anyone who's listening, <laughs> go Google him and you see his, <laughs> his professional black and white photo from the 90s. Like it looks so much like me that. Hold doing? on, I'm I'm doing I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, I've looked at his 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 photo before, but now mm-hmm. now that you say it, I'm just like, well, now I gotta fucking. Wait, hold on, I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll throw it up on uh, on YouTube you so go. that everybody can everyone can see it. <laughs> Still can't believe you made an in person meeting. That is the most badass donor conceived thing I've ever heard. Like that is gold standard donor conception. Like, well, oh. I'm really proud of myself because I did. I'm a very um, emotionally reactive person and I just like I, w- I was very and especially at this point I was quite young still right I was in my early 20s and so mm-hmm. I just kept well nope that can't be the case there's yes. gonna be more of us who are coming forward you're gonna mm-hmm. see these answers Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tell me more about that. Like, just... yeah, keep keep trying, dude. It's that that that's the thing. Like about any of these doctors who committed fertility fraud, I'm like, you literally created your own fucking destruction. You created the evidence. All right. So how how does how does Norm get how how do we how does Norm get caught then? Well, unfortunately, I couldn't without starting a whole other case. Um, and and. I, the pre with the previous case that had just gone public, where donors had been swapped out, no one seemed to care. Like it wasn't no nothing bad had happened to me. Like who cares? It was supposed to be an anonymous person. Now it's another anonymous person. Boohoo! So sad. Like shouldn't you be happy? You exist. <laughs> Um, I, so I I literally I, I literally got a comment on Facebook because um, I was talking about fertility fraud and somebody commented yeah. like they wanted a baby they got a baby like yeah and I think they said like it's a little smug yeah. of him to like you know want to continue his line that much but they're like but you got the baby what does it matter and I'm just like right I, but that baby grows up and has very real feelings and I, might want answers and you don't have any information for them. And it's also like, what a fun, I'm like, I just, I, I think I wrote back. I was like, I love reading the ways that people excuse sexual assault. I love it. What a One way to hold it up. Said that he said, if it, if it hadn't been done with a medical instrument, if he had done it physically with his body, would we feel differently? Yeah. Yeah. And it's something that for people to to remember with fertility fraud is um, the doctor goes into the other room, masturbates, and in the state of arousal, then inseminates it into the person. Like so, like yeah. let's let's not mince words here. It's fucking it's sexual assault. I'm like there's mm. okay. So well, I'm preying upon highly vulnerable people. Yeah, and, absolutely oh. taking advantage. Yeah. Absolutely. And when does that sexual touch stop and it be- goes back to the impatient doctor? It just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we are sitting in limbo, going through DNA results. Okay. Emailing fourth cousins. <laughs> okay. Going, hi, I'm Kat. I'm donor conceived. I'm looking for yep. any information. Absolutely. Um, I think you're a match on my paternal side. Do you know anyone in your family who went to med school and might have donated sperm? Yep. Mm -hmm. In the late 80s, early 90s. (laughs) And some of those people were kind of helpful. Um, A lot of them just would initially be helpful. And then I think have a conversation with a member of their family and just go like, no, 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 no. Like this person agreed to be anonymous. Too bad, so sad go away so it was just kind of years of triangulating dna results and pulling emails from matches and going on facebook and do they look like me Mm -hmm. but in summer 2015 um i had a cousin uh in in new york uh reach out to me okay and uh in my 
bio on Family Tree DNA, I had written, I am donor conceived. I'm looking for any information about my paternal side. And it just so happened that this cousin um, who had matched very closely with me, um, him and his mother had both done DNA tests and they both matched very, very closely. Um, but this cousin happened to have a son who was conceived with an egg donor. And so he wrote me this beautiful letter of, you know, if my son ever goes looking for more information about his biological family, I hope that his matches will be helpful and will at least try to answer what questions they can. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously we're related. Um, I'm pretty confident I'm related on your paternal side. So let's see if we can get you some information. Um, okay. Hell yeah. yes. I love <laughs> this. This cousin in New York, uh, because they were a reporter, uh, was asking some really good questions. Mm. And so he got the details of the story and then came home that night and asked, told his mom what had happened. And, you know, we met, I matched with this cousin in Canada, Kat, and her parents went to this fertility doctor, Dr. Norman Barwin and his mom went oh Barwin we're, we're related to the Barwins and then the pieces started falling into place <laughs> pretty quickly and there it is you so, can't hide from DNA da, 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 yeah. da. so it was still difficult to specifically figure out what that connection was but we mm -hmm. did find it and we were able to narrow down exactly how yeah. I was related to them assuming it was Dr. Barwin or a close male relative who had used this yeah. stuff um, and this cousin who was a very well-known uh, very accomplished writer <laughs> helped me write this letter <laughs> to Dr. Barwin um, oh laying out all of that information essentially painting him into a corner with dna evidence nice. and names of relatives yes. uh, who were his relatives mm -hmm. that i had proven through dna that i was related to them as well and you know please take a dna test <laughs> oh whoa all it was right really well written Okay. Whoa. All right. So we have this letter. We got the DNA test. We're just like, bam, Norm. <laughs> yes. We send it. And I guess I, I, you send it to him. You drop it off. You, you carry your pigeon parade. Oh, he, he called me. We'd have a really awkward call, but he agreed to take a paternity test. Um, I, and it's like, dude, you know I what know. the answer is going to be. I think, I think I had painted him into a corner. We knew what the answers were going to be. And he couldn't get around trying to be this nice guy. I think. This mm. nice guy from synagogue. I honestly, I think because I had that personal connection, um, that is why I got the answers I did and why I was able to have those conversations with him. And did he just hope that things? like maybe that paternity test will get switched? Maybe someone will put maybe <laughs> someone will put their own sample in the paternity test. Yeah, and no, maybe I they'll know. do it for me. I, <laughs> I think he just he knew the answer. And yeah, I think of course he, he knew I, the I would answer. Get that information and it would be enough, and I would go away. Um. Because I really wasn't threatening in my communication at that point. I really wasn't interested in trying to sue him or mm -hmm. I just wanted my answers and I wanted him to be upfront about it instead of this weird thing he was doing. So we take the paternity test and he, are, are you the daddy? Are you the father? <laughs> and the results, Maury, are. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, it was him. It was definitely um, Doctor Daddy. Congratulations, you congratulations. committed fertility fraud. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right, so you got your answer. Um, it 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 was the uh, it was the masturbation switcheroo. <laughs> and so his official answer to me as to what happened <laughs> was that. You ready for this? 
I am. Uh, hold on. No, 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 no. Hold on. We have to reposition. Okay, I have to read because I, I, I've never. Okay. okay. Tell me. What In the he spring say? of 1990, he bought a new sperm counter and there must have been some contamination while he was calibrating the machine. And that is how his own specimen was used instead of the donor that my parents picked. <laughs> you did okay? He said, <laughs> He said that with a straight face. Oh no, and my earphone did die. So I can't even hear your reaction. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh my god, well, Kat's big singer earphone, oh my god! What a time for my headphones to die. <laughs> oh my god, so, he said that with a straight face? Oh my god, this dude's a loon! Uh-huh. Okay, alright, I mean, alright, so- At that point, it was just me. I didn't have any siblings that I knew of, although I was highly suspicious that they existed. Yeah. Um, so oh as ridiculous as it was, and I didn't believe it, but it could have been plausible. It might. Maybe. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. And the dog ate my homework. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and all right, so we have this maybe, maybe plausible reality where he is just this innocent good guy where yeah. the thing fell into the thing and fell into the thing and oops, I came into the thing. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just so stupid. All right. Um. <laughs> So what are we on now? Chapter five? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah. The only thing I wanted from him at that point was that he tell his kids because he had four kids again, who I knew. Oh um, my God. Oh, not well, but like I had been in the same room, but yet them. seen them. And oh my God. Grandkids. Um, <laughs> I had some of them I had taught at musical oh. theater because oh. we were around the same age so my because <laughs> the jewish community is small so i just wanted him to tell his family yeah because i was having small panic attacks when i would go home to ottawa yeah. knowing that the likelihood that we would end up in the same room all yeah. together was quite high <laughs> incest is a problem da, 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 da. oh my god okay I uh, <laughs> yeah, no, re re that is such a kind, way too generous and reasonable ask. And, okay, okay, and, okay, what, ha what happened next, Kat? What happened next? <laughs> uh, well, he, ca surprisingly, he would tell me he was going to do it. He's going to mm, tell no, it. No, I'm sure. I'm sure know, he did. Yeah, just like how I'm. be together. Yeah. Or the right time. One mm -hmm. son couldn't be there. Yeah, and I can't go to the gym because my cat was sad. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. There was a leaf in my way. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And so that went back and forth for mm. almost a year. Mm. A year? Um, a year? Mm -hmm. They weren't in the same room for a year? A whole year? Really? The thing is, these emails were so manipulative. And he was very good at, like, you know, my family. I'm so worried. It's not about you. I'm worried about what my family will think of me. And, oh, and how this poor, is going to destroy my relationships with them. And how much this is going to rock their world. And it was just, like... Oh, you know, I do feel really bad, but <laughs> please just tell them. <laughs> oh my god. Um so <laughs> <laughs> the good news is because I had waited for so long, uh something was kind of happening in the background that I wasn't aware of, which is that um how do I word this without spoiling it? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh uh, no, there's spoilers. <laughs> a young girl named Rebecca Dixon, um, and her parents were realizing that something was off in her parents' fertility treatment. She uh, had learned that she wasn't related to her her father. Um, like she thought she uh, should be. And uh, they were highly suspicious that uh, the doctor had swapped out uh, samples and had used his own sperm. Um, (sighs) mm -hmm. Uh, So they, (laughs) because they're a lot more intense than me and probably a lot smarter, (laughs) went straight to a law firm. Excuse me, girl, you are, no, 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 no. We, we are not putting ourselves down here. Okay. No, 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 no. You handle they this like a fucking, excuse me, you went to his motherfucking doctor's office. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that takes cojones and intelligence to pull that fucking shit off. Good. Now, they I. They took a more, they took a different tactic, I will say. I and mean, they went I. Straight- I love a direct legal approach. I love that. Good for them. Lovely. They went straight to a lawyer. Um, I love it. And this was a lawyer who had dealt with the other case in 2014, where the samples had been switched. So we have the history. They were quite familiar with Norm. Um, Mm, With Norm. One of our lawyers said he felt like he had been like punched in the stomach because Rebecca walked in and looked so much like Dr. Barwin. Um, (gasps) that he knew at that point exactly what had happened. Oh, um, but because these lawyers had, <laughs> and I had been in touch with the previous um, patients in that other case, I got a message one day saying, hey, cat," because <laughs> I had just been looking for support, right? Uh-huh. And so the previous patients were just kind of, I really recommend you get in touch with these lawyers. I know you don't want to take a legal approach, you should really get in t- contact with these lawyers because they knew about Rebecca. Yep. But they couldn't tell you. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> so I contacted this law firm mm-hmm. and it, it took a lot of um, pulling teeth. Um, but, you know, like I have the DNA evidence. Like if you have a girl out there who thinks that she's related to Dr. Barwin, like take my blood, take anything you Take need. it. <laughs> Get her tested because all Use I wanted, my body. I just yeah, exactly. I just wanted to have siblings. That was all I wanted. That's the whole reason why I wanted to go down this path was finding half siblings. Oh, uh, this is such like a monkey paw wish. Cause like I also like just wanted siblings. And yeah. it's and it's that monkey paw was like, okay. Blah. You asked for. Careful, you asked for. All right. Well, and so, they eventually put me in touch with her and before they even had the chance to run like a professional legal dna test rebecca had tested on 23 at me and i had already done a test through family tree dna but i knew about jed match and so rebecca loaded her dna into jed match which is a third party site and allows you to compare samples yeah. from different commercial DNA sites yeah. and lo and behold we're half sisters yeah yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. uh so it was not in fact uh con- or maybe it still was contamination <laughs> but it had happened more than once <laughs> oh yeah that, that, that sperm just kept falling over and over and over it's incredible how gravity just ceased to work in that office uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh my God. So, okay. So my lawyers, so I had done a DNA test with Dr. Barwin, but her lawyers, um, our lawyers at this point, couldn't get him to submit a DNA sample. Um, but Dr. Barwin's lawyers did not know that piece. Um, <laughs> that there was a wrench in their plan because I had... DNA evidence proving that I was connected to him. You you um, had it. You you had the candlestick. You had it. So, you had the candlestick in the library. <laughs> but then it became <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, but then it became a question of, well, we know there's more. It's not just us. There's no way it's just us. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. 
but how do you find people who don't know that they're the person that you're looking for yeah. um and the lawyers at that point seem convinced that the only way to locate those people on the scale that we needed to which is essentially have every former patient take a dna test um oh my was god to a, class action, a class action lawsuit um against dr barwin um and have it go public in Ottawa. <laughs> okay. Well, I have to say that's like more mobilization and that's m- something more that those lawyers were doing than I've I've ever heard of like a fertility fraud case down here. Um so I'm happy to hear that the lawyers were taking such like a like an intense stance. Like that's great. Oh, they were great. They that's were fabulous amazing. to yeah. hear. That they were yeah. taking it as seriously and not just going like, well, sucks to be your kids. Like, I like hearing that. So I think they'd had previous cases with him. They were aware of that other case that had happened. They had handled that other case in 2014. Yeah. Um, and I, I think they weren't very satisfied with the outcome at the time and the public opinion of, well, who cares? It's another anonymous donor. But now they really had... <laughs> Well, especially the the IVF case switching is always something like even in even the people who are who are absolute jerks to people like you in your situation or like Jacoba, the IVF situations, that's typically where like even the most of assholes will kind of go like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's kind of fucking wrong. Yeah. That one. All right. Maybe that was. Well, and that's the thing with Rebecca is that her dad's sperm was supposed to be used. Yeah. And so her entire life, people were asking her if she was adopted yeah. or, yeah. you're like, no, my dad's, it's my, I'm my father's daughter. <laughs> Whereas like, at least with me, I was like, no, I'm done or conceived. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But um, we launched the class action um, right around uh, when Trump won the primary. And because the news had been so, it was kind of like the perfect storm because the news had been so saturated with Trump, Hillary, um, every front page of the paper was all about the election. And there was just this moment where they were like, do we have any other story? Do we have something else to throw? Oh, okay. All right. I love it. You were the palate cleanser. (laughs) exactly but then it meant that we were the story of the week in ottawa and Mm -hmm. just in ontario but we made national canada's a really big country and we were on the national yeah i mean it's huge yeah which then meant that the law firm had (laughs) a whole bunch of former patients reaching out i'm sure um mm -hmm, and people urgently taking dna tests yeah um, so when Rebecca and I had gotten in contact, she had matched with two other siblings on 23 and me, but they were anonymous. Um, and they didn't, they weren't interested in, in learning more. Yeah. Um, but with the class action, we were pretty quickly put in touch with a whole bunch of people <laughs> who ended up testing and being related to us. But what also came to light was that there were more cases where he had switched out samples father from family a match child from family b um oh my god he also in addition to all of this um dr barwin's clinic was the number one clinic in ontario for banking your sperm if you were a man (gasps) who was about to undergo chemo treatment oh my god impotent so a whole bunch of men who had banked their sperm and then had gone back years later after surviving cancer um went back to the clinic thought they had conceived a biological child with their own sperm and we're discovering that it was another patient oh my God. sperm or it was just some other anonymous donor um and that their sperm might have been used inappropriately in another patient's 
treatment. Oh my God. <laughs> so we had the easy answer at, in at least that, you know, it's this doctor. Um, the messiness came from all these other patients were. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'd love a I'd love a breakdown if you if you can. How many people did Doctor Barwin switch out the the chosen DNA for <laughs> something else, whether it was his or another person, random donor? How many people are we talking about? So, in regards to the children in this case. There's a hundred children who do not possess the DNA of their intended biological father. A hundred. Uh, with a hundred. With the last update that had gone out when the settlement was reached, 83 children did not know the identity of their biological father. Um, 17 of my siblings were a part of the class action. But we had several claimants who were fathers. Um, The mothers are not included in those tallies. Right. Uh, And then also men who had banked their sperm with Dr. Barwin's clinic. Oh my God. Um, I believe we were over 200 claimants in the class action. And that's people who knew about it when it was happening and who might not have been able to participate because they found out too late. Um, once the case had closed. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So just to make sure that everybody <laughs> followed followed what that was. So there are over a hundred kids. So doctor adult children. So doctor so there are are a hundred over a hundred children. As part of this lawsuit, because it has ballooned since. Mm-hmm. So it's more than that, but for this class action lawsuit, which was 2000. The last updated numbers. <laughs> last updated numbers. So this was 2014? 2015? No, this was 2021. Oh. It was during the pandemic. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, sorry. My fault. So 2021, there were 100 kids w- to which Dr. Barwin did not chew, did not inseminate with the chosen DNA. and. Correct. 17 of those children he had switched out the chosen dna whether that was donor dna or the dad's dna and ivf with his own mm-hmm. yep and then 83 he 83. just switched with fuck knows who mm-hmm. and then other patients other sperm donors and then a hundred more and then there was a hundred other plaintiffs who the, were so the parents the parents were allowed to be claimants okay um, rightfully so rightfully so um, yes and <laughs> so, so then the, the, to receive treatments also oh siblings um of those children mentioned um have the right to a claim because they were discovering that their sibling who was supposed to be a full sibling or even a half sibling um, was not in fact related to them. So they were included within the class action. So it's, wow. it's a big final number of who was <laughs> participating. Jesus. All right. Um, putting, yeah. putting a pin in that, how many siblings do you know you have? Cause I know that was part I'm of almost, the, cause I know that was part of the class yeah. action lawsuit, but how many siblings do you have? There's currently 28 of us wow. that I know of. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. That now, I know about. Oh, okay. That yeah. you know about. Now, did the other siblings, I don't know if I'm allowed to ask this, did they just not want to be part of the class, class action lawsuit? Were they too late? Uh, were they not allowed to be part of the class action lawsuit? Or was it like all three of all, all, all of the above? I can't fully answer that without giving you more information. Lauren. Okay. Oh, fine. We have to. So there, there is some privilege and information in there, and that, that's legit. We, we, you know, we got, we got to say within our legal bounds. All right. So <laughs> I don't. I, I think there's nothing illegal about what I'm saying. I just respect my siblings and some of them. I appreciate that, and I love that, and I love that protection. Um, <laughs> and okay. All right, so class action lawsuit <laughs> underway. We're we're gonna fight this. It's over. 
hundreds of people. What happens, cat? Uh, so the Ontario College of Surgeons and Physicians, mm, mm -hmm. which is that provincial governing body, along with um, the CMPA, which is the uh, Canadian essentially malpractice insurance that doctors sure. have here. It's the governing body, supposedly for patients and physicians. Okay. Um, uh, they set their number, their settlement on about 13.7 million dollars um but that tally uh did not um in with that number they didn't feel that any of the children had a valid claim so that number that they reached mm -hmm, uh that number that they reached was um assuming that only the parents who had been former patients had the right to a claim luckily um, because, uh, the, the lawyers get to determine who is a valid claimant and who isn't, they were able to allow the children in this case, um, a settlement, a part of that settlement, but because there's so many people, um, it, the settlements vary from, I think, 20,000 to 40, 50,000 a person. Okay. 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 Well, I'm, I'm glad. You can pull up these okay. numbers. These are all, um, okay. they're all on the internet. All right. If you want to pull up the chart. I, I, I'm glad that there was a settlement. I'm glad that, that people <laughs> were financially compensated in a certain way. That's good. But I'd like to go back to who, who the fuck thought the children had that did nothing to complain about. Who the fuck thought that? Who said that? The Ontario College of Surgeons and Physicians, along with the CMPA. <laughs> CMPA? It stands for... Canadian... What, what do they stand for? Canadian Medical Professionals Association? Canadian maybe? Medical Professionals Association, my ass! What the fuck kind of opinion is that bullshit? Protective. Canadian Medical Protective. Oh, yeah, that's really protective of them. They're very protective. 100%. Ah, oh, okay. Well, I'm glad the lawyers were able to step in. That's good. Now, I, I just, out of my, I'm going to assume Dr. Barwin didn't pay any of that $13 million. No. 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 Okay. His insurance. It was his insurance. He, mm. he was expected to pay again for the costs of the hearing. Um, and, and they formally revoked his medical license, which I, in theory, theory appreciate but he had already been retired for over so that five was years. so it was kind of like oh no so if he ever decided he wanted to become a doctor again in Canada he wouldn't be able to um but it was kind of a moot point because he how, wasn't how much how much money did he have to pay to cover the hearings like how much was that oh yeah, I can find it if you want it. It, it was very little. Very minimal. Okay. Yeah. So the dude paid. Okay. So the dude was already retired. He was already like peace. He was, <laughs> you know, playing shuffleboard. And then <laughs> the hearings happened. He yeah. gave a, a itty bitty baby amount of money. And he was like, here you go. Have some fun. The insurance companies essentially bailed him out. And he, and then they were like, you're no longer allowed to practice medicine and he went no problem and adding to that point adding um, we're Ontario adding to this college okay well, the, 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 my frustration is that the Ontario college who then used this as an opportunity to really scapegoat the issues in their own um <laughs> governance of this industry mm -hmm. um to blame it on one bad apple instead of recognizing the holes in their own yeah. um, procedures. Seems like there's a few uh, little holes. They refuse to update any of their checklists for when they go into these clinics. So the thing that you need to remember is that the Ontario College and Health Canada, which are both um, major governing bodies of the medical industry in Canada, um, went into his clinic 
while it was operating and were unable to identify key errors in his practice. Um, they Now they did recognize a couple of um, bits of documentation that, <laughs> that um, were misleading or weren't notated correctly, but never was it a full shutdown and stop what you're doing. You need to <laughs> reassess everything. Uh, he was just kind of able to continue practicing on his way. What? Okay. okay sure. All right. <laughs> and that, that was a lot of my frustration was I, I, and I don't want to take away from anything he's done because what he did was absolutely terrible. Um, but you would expect the governing bodies to have been able to identify that there was so much going on behind yeah. closed doors. Mm-hmm. Well, and the fact that, like, after this huge case, this massive case, the laws haven't changed, even even no, even in Ottawa, like it hasn't changed. And that's that's terrifying. I mean, at least after the Dr. Klein case, um, they they were able to get fertility fraud legislation passed in Indiana. At least that happened yeah. because of that case. Yeah. And that's how we've been able to get the fertility fraud legislation passed in certain states is because of those really rough cases that because have Indiana gone public. It, yeah. But I, I mean, oh my God, <laughs> it is very difficult with Canadian law. Um, and I won't say that they haven't ever tried to pass legislation um the the long story (laughs) is in 19 i want to say 1992 the mulroney government which was a very conservative government that we had um in canada did identify that this was a multi-million dollar industry with very little legislation and they did assemble a committee to speak with the donor conceived community, to to speak with intended parents, with fertility specialists and um, make suggestions Mm -hmm. as to what they felt would be appropriate legislation um, on a federal basis uh, to pass in order to protect uh, intended, mostly intended parents, but also some donor conceived people. Um, And they did bring that legislation forward in, I believe in 1994, but it's, a very slow process Mm -hmm. here and unfortunately every time it was brought up on a federal level um the only thing that was ever really said was because our provinces our states essentially um regulate medical um in canada the quebec government (laughs) kept saying this isn't the place for the federal government it's the place of the provincial government Mm. And I understand that I live in a country with socialized health care and a lot of these things that I'm asking for would require money <laughs> yeah. um, to, to be able to keep updated records. Of course. Um, but I also think it's essential <laughs> so that we're not knowingly depriving people of information about their medical history. Yeah. Um, A lot of my siblings who have discovered their Ashkenazi and who have um, had children, they should have tested their while they were pregnant for so many illnesses that Ashkenazi Jews are particularly um, likely to uh, inherit. I'm about to do that process. Yeah, BRCA1. Um, (laughs) BRCA1 and Mm Tay-Sachs and this whole plethora of additional testing that we should be doing you know if you don't know that you're from a certain background then you're really putting an entire group of people at risk especially if they don't know that they're at risk yeah I've been told that the fact that I have gone I I went 25 years not knowing that I was Ashkenazi Jewish um like actively lied about what I I've been told by medical professionals they were like that's like put you in that that's incredibly unethical that you didn't know that yeah. you weren't Ashkenazi yeah. um and anybody from the Ashkenazi community is like that's horrific that you were not told yeah um a thousand percent I I, I think what's so frustrating is it's that you know these um 
to some level, the government, but these doctors and, you know, really private businesses, when we talk about the sperm banks, um, they're personally withholding critical information about someone's identity. Yeah. And you just think like now in 20, I understand I was born in 1991, whatever. It was the wild, wild west. But you were purposely creating people, creating humans yeah. who are being denied uh, access to information about their like their medical, their cultural, their genetic identity. And it's stuff that it's um, like, it's not that it, it it doesn't exist. This exists. You are just systematically keeping us away from it. That, that yeah. to me is what gets to me is like, this wasn't a horrific accident and, uh, you know, and, and it, there's just, it, it was an impossible, horrible situation that we are just trying to piece together what's best that's not what it is. The yeah. uh, uh, my conception was so premeditated. Contracts were signed before I was even conceived. This is something I brought up to Dr. Barwin because he kept saying, "Well, your parents signed a contract. Your parents promised the donor anonymity, as if he knew who the donor even was." And it's like cause... I didn't sign shit, asshole. I know that's what I said. Show me my contract. Show what me my I signature. You obviously, didn't take in my. Uh, future consideration (laughs) and and I'm not saying this to like shit on intended parents like anonymous donors don't exist like I've proven that (laughs) you can't be anonymous you you are sort of the 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 warning label as to anonymity doesn't exist and it It doesn't exist and let's just Um, break down for a second like a lot of the things that you've just said because I I know that a lot of people are probably having a lot of questions and I I just want to like quickly run through (laughs) One your tactics of what doctors will tell patients still. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's so let, let's just first start off with all the donor conceived people who have been told by their recipient parents, by society, by the infertility clinics that you are not allowed to contact your donor because they were anonymous. Yeah. So, honey, you are allowed to do that. You didn't sign shit. You didn't sign that contract whatsoever. Now, y- if your parents signed a contract for an anonymous donor, your parents have to keep to that anonymity. Sure, you don't. You absolutely do not. Anytime someone says that, that is fucking bullshit. Do not listen to them. But cat, I, I, we, we need to unfortunately wrap up because I could, I could easily talk to you for another three exactly. hours, but I, I do want to share one last story about doctor, about, about Norm to really Little just Norm. really, really to me, Aww. in my opinion, really show who he is as a person. Um, oh no, did you Google? Did you Google? Oh no, this is a story you told me about him a while ago because he, he enjoyed participating in athletic competitions and there was one in particular that he was in the boston marathon would you mind sharing everyone because i feel like this really tells people who norm is i feel like it's a good character analysis so in addition to being a renowned fertility specialist, mm-hmm. uh, he liked to run marathons. Mm-hmm. Um, so he ran in the Victoria Marathon and he did exceptionally well for his age group. Um, and because of that, he qualified for the Boston Marathon. Um, Bully for Norm. That's great. Good for him. Great job. Yeah. And at this point, he was probably in his late 60s. Okay. Um, so he <laughs> qualified in the 2000s for the Boston Marathon. And he finished with the time that was so excellent. I believe he was 14th in his age category. Wow. Uh, that's huge. Later, because the Boston Marathon doesn't just take your word for it. I don't know if you're aware of this. Um, you don't just get to say, oh, I ran in the Boston Marathon. Uh, they they checked his chip on his shoe. Um, and he failed to appear at multiple checkpoints um, throughout the, the route. And he was later disqualified and um, banned from participating in the Boston Marathon. Um, and you think one might learn from that experience <laughs> nay 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 <laughs> not norm <laughs> nay 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 he also ran in the ottawa marathon 
Um, I believe it was Ottawa. Maybe it was Victoria. Um, again, but he he also didn't appear at checkpoints. Oh. Um, and when they called him out on this, mm. he said that you know his hernia mm. acted up. Oh, mm-hmm. he had cramping, mm-hmm. but he wanted to feel the, the rush of crossing the finish line, and so I believe he took a cab to a near near the finish line. And then ran across the finish line to finish 14th in his age division. And there you have it, everybody. Norm Barwin, the guy who needed to feel the rush of crossing the finish line. Oh, my God. All right. Well, Kat, thank you as a uh, as a as as a Barwin baby representative to be on here um, and to make uh, the United States feel less lonely in our fight for fertility fraud. Uh, glad to know <laughs> our 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 neighbors up north also seem to be struggling with something similar. Uh, but thank you, Kat. I appreciate your not just your honesty, your openness. I appreciate your sense of humor because I oh, would God. have not been able to get through this without laughing my way. And I hope that everyone oh, feels God. the same. Um, I'm I hope that this entertained everybody on their commute to work or back from their work to home. And we are all emotionally scarred together. Um, I love it. I, 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 I enjoy the shared trauma. Look, if we have to go through it, y'all got to fucking hear about it. There you go. And on that note, thank you again for listening to Insemination. Please like, subscribe, leave a rating because that bullshit really helps. And, um, go, just go hug someone. Just go hug. Just give give someone a hug. They need it. I need it. I need to go get a hug right now. I I don't know. I need to go pet my cat or something. Um, there you go. Yeah, but have go. have a lovely day. And to t- t- just yeah, I don't I don't know. Right to your uh, I, I'm just <laughs> right to your government. Make, let's go make right to your, your government, everybody. All right. Have a lovely night. <laughs>